Hello everybody, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today by popular request, I am going to show you guys how to make the maximum settings in a set of Corsa for your graphical fidelity. This is not going to be a good performance setting. This is only to explain and show you guys how to get the best quality out of the game. So as we know, MSAA and FXAA are anti-aliasing will keep on and in here we're basically just going to go ahead and max out everything with the exception of the shadow resolution I find at 4096 is when they're basically uh, maxed out and kind of realistic 6000 is a little sharper um, it's almost over sharp and 8,000 the clouds are just really sharp so from 4,000 to 8,000 you pick what you like the most and the reflections 2048 you can do six faces per frame but this thing here will tell you that is literally like rendering double HD reflections and uh, you know 37 percent performance loss Whereas if you do 1,024 to 4 faces per frame, it's much better. So you can run either one of those. They're both basically maxed out. But for the sake of the maxed out, maxed out, we'll do that. And we'll crank the rendering distance right up. We'll put sun rays on, high quality resolution mirrors. 16 times anisotropic filtering. Smoke generation, I'm still going to leave at a minimum because I have CSP settings to change to still make the smoke look good. And I'm going to leave depth of field off and heat shimmering off and motion blur off in AC video. And we're done here. I'm going to go ahead and save this for you guys as a fully maxed preset that you can download in the description. Now we're going to move over to the custom shaders patch side of things. We're going to skip the general patch settings because this is something everybody should be able to figure out for themselves by now if you've been following this channel for a while. Let's enable break disk effects and let's just make sure that nothing in here needs to be changed. Headlights breaking and clashes, crashes, deform the hood, sure, might as well have that on. Colorful shadowing, we're going to enable all that. Extra effects, we're going to enable. Motion blur enable, quality high, everything maxed out there. Temporal anti-aliasing, I'm going to leave exactly how it is. However, if you want the game to be a little more sharp, you can increase some sharpness here. Your local reflections, I prefer to use high old. High Z technically is the newer one that can look better. But at the same time, it doesn't work properly on every single car model that's being put into the game. So it can also look worse. High old will provide you a much longer and more reliable, um, happy game. That's all I'm going to say. I know it sounded weird, but if you use the high Z, you're going to have an unhappy game and have to change that setting every other car that you drive. Ambient occlusion. HBAO by NVIDIA and opacity at 100%, extra screen space lighting with glowing emissives, light bounce, tracks on, take the cars off because at nighttime, sometimes with traffic, the paint reflects onto the road and it looks like traffic cars have neon, so we're not going to use the cars one, and we will use fog blur, and we will just in keep all of the settings here for the multipliers the same, however, you're more than welcome to come back to this at any time, and change it. Also a good thing to note is if you go to the bottom right of your computer where my mouse cursor is right now and you hit that arrow down here if you actually right click on the Aceto Corsa ACS emblem you can right click and open custom shaders patch it will give you a window that shows you all the settings you can change while you're in game so most of these you can actually change and watch live while you're in game. Fake shadows effects, we're not going to touch anything here. We're just going to leave this one completely how it is. And we're going to scroll down to graphics adjustments. If you want the max quality, all we do is slide up the LOD multipliers. We don't force low res anything for anybody anywhere at any time. 
And the other thing we're going to do in here is go down to our anti-aliasing, hit FXAA 3.1, put that on ultra, and again, come back in here later and adjust your sharpness. Maybe you want to use Fidelity Cast by AMD. That's all up to you, but this is how you get it started. Make sure your color buffer and everything here is all the same. And we're just going to go ahead and leave the MIP bias for tilted surfaces at 1.5. I haven't seen a lot of places in the game where this one specific setting is making a big noticeable difference. Then we go to grass effects. This is going to give us procedurally generated grass. However, I will tell you that it is a script. There is a file for grass effects in the config for the map. And basically what it does is it takes 10, 20, 30, 40, however many different types of grass options that people have put in there. And it will procedurally generate not only the grass that's in the game that should be grass, but it will also show you like some flowers and things like that depending what map you're on. If you're on a nice UK style map, you'll probably have some flowers and things like that. Whereas if you're on Nordschleife, you probably just have a lot of really nice grass. We will allow an extra effects pass, we will cast shadows when possible, and we will use smoother blending with MSAA. This is going to make everything with the grass effects look better. GUI is personal preference. This all has to do with the app bar on the right side of your screen. That one is up to you completely. Lighting effects, when we come in here, we'll put the car's casting light to 20 or 25. Mirror quality, dynam dynamic lights with sun shadows, very expensive it says. And we'll also hit dynamic shadows at full resolution. Cars with shadows 4, that should be enough to see the... F Sorry, I stuttered big time there. That should be enough to see the four closest cars to you. That's what I meant to say before it sounded like I was under the water. Neck effects is going to be a personal preference, of course. And as we get down into particle effects, again, we are going to hit everything here that is going to turn things on. Basically, we'll have the fireworks, we'll put the solid pieces of grass, we'll turn the limit for the particles up. So when you get into an accident, you see more of those particles and glass break and all that kind of stuff same thing for the sparks here we'll turn the sparks up to like 2000 spawn rate so we have a ton of sparks when you bottom out the car hit the wall and again make sure the render for extra effects is on and now we get to reflection effects where we are going to change the resolution to 2048 in here and we're going to put shot cube map around focused car rather than camera picture your camera view being how you see the reflection and if you look at the back of a car at a distance the reflections that you see off of the bumper are going to be based off of where your camera is located if you enable this setting what happens now is the reflection is based basically from where the car is so it will give you a more one-to-one -one reflection. If you park your car with this setting on in a parking lot in the game, the parking lot lines will line up with your car perfectly. That's what this setting does. It's very demanding. Pure will say that you need to change this setting. It's not working properly. It's just not a recommended setting. It does work. Everything will still work fine. Your game won't break if you have this setting on. Peer's not going to break. You just don't fix the setting automatically with Peer, and you can keep the setting enabled. Shadowed wheels we should be able to have on with the newest CSP and the newest Peer. If you have older versions, you don't want to have this on, but the newest stuff works. We'll turn the skid mark amounts up to about 200,000. Why not? advanced blending and let's just go with that smart mirror we're gonna put real mirrors active so we can adjust our mirrors in the game this is going to give us more realism it's gonna look better 
And we can also set a custom render distance up to a thousand meters. This is going to make it so we can see really far back in our mirrors and have more graphical fidelity. Smart shadows. Under smart shadows, you can turn the overhang multiplier to 100%, increase the fourth cascade distance to 2,000 meters, and now you will have a little higher shadow resolution and crispier shadows, especially at a distance. The next thing we're going to do is go into track adjustments and you can pick what you want to do here. I will save this preset if you want to mess around with anything in here. Tires effects, let's go, a turn and, let's go ahead and turn that on and throw on extra visual options for that as well. Under weather effects, we're going to come in here and enable full resolution for post-processing tweaks. That's going to make sure everything is in full resolution all the time for post-processing and we're still going to keep these settings at the bottom disabled because they look ugly. Force headlights on for other drivers, force headlights on for AI drivers. This is going to make it so the cars are always using their headlights when you're in an online session, which technically graphics look better when headlights are on in almost everybody's opinion. And increased cloud shadows resolution. Then we're going to go ahead and go to windscreen effects and what we can do here if you want is mess around with this yourself because there's different types of options here and everybody has a preference. Some people want to see out of their windshield clear, some people want to see the shadows and reflections, some people want to see the blur. That's up to you, you got to come in here and mess around with this yourself. But between all of this, all of these settings here that we have enabled, which I will save this preset as well, and also post this one. These settings will give you the most graphical fidelity in the game. Now, a couple common problems that we gotta go over just really quick, okay? Some people might not like the temporal anti-aliasing with all of the other anti-aliasing because it may make the game just a little blurry for you. If that happens, try turning off temporal anti-aliasing try coming in here and maybe turning down some of this anti-aliasing. It's not a big deal, sometimes it does get a little blurry. Also, another really important thing to note for both AMD and NVIDIA graphics card users, in your software, whether it be GeForce Experience, NVIDIA Control Panel, AMD Adrenaline software, in your software, you have to make sure, you must make sure, that you go to the softwares and you make sure that everything is on default for the card and things aren't turned off. For example, if your NVIDIA software has anti-aliasing forced off and it's not letting the application control it, your game will not have anti-aliasing. You have to make sure that under your main graphics card settings and the game settings under the graphics card software and in Content Manager, your settings aren't contradicting other settings. You have to make sure that you don't have settings enabled on one system software and the other software it's disabled. Make sure you have everything enabled in Content Manager and then go into your control panels your software is for your graphics cards and make sure that everything in those softwares is available for the game to use. Usually you will see the option in the software that will say application controlled. If it says application controlled, that's fine. It's going to let the game do that. So real quick, I'm just going to give you guys an example of what that means here and this isn't the NVIDIA software, this is the um, AMD Adrenaline software. But nonetheless, if I go to graphics, what you'll see here is a whole bunch of things that are disabled, right? And if you look to see what's disabled, I have super resolution disabled, all of this new technology disabled, I don't want image sharpening. None of this stuff matters to me. And look what we have here. Anti-aliasing. 
use application settings that's it that's all you have to do is make sure that in your softwares everything is good like that and the other thing you have to do is in your software you'll be able to find your games and under your games you'll be able to click on that and when you click on the game you'll be able to see the same settings that you still want to make sure say use application settings it's the same thing for Nvidia you just right click you hit GeForce experience and you go to Nvidia control panel you'll also have that there so that's what you guys need to do to get the best graphical fidelity and make sure that everything is recognized across all platforms so that all of these settings work if you enjoyed today's video give me a like comment subscribe and the settings are in the description for this CSP and this AC video preset which is going to make you have bad performance at the expense of a fully maxed out graphical game. Have a good day everybody. I'm sorry if I sound sick like I'm plugging my nose. But just remember, it's not about what you've got. It's about how you set it up. Have a good day everybody. Take care.